Now there is seemingly 9,347 different ways that you can sharpen your images. There's a lot of misconceptions that come with sharpening your photos. In this video, I wanna show you a pro trick, at least I think it's a pro trick. It's something I didn't learn about for a really long time in my photography. I'm gonna show you how to use that to sharpen your photos. Now it is gonna take place within Photoshop, but don't worry those of you Lightroom users out there, super easy, Command E or Control E opens up your image straight into Photoshop. You don't need to know anything else about Photoshop other than what I'm gonna show you in this video. But if you are interested in learning about Photoshop, do check out my full Photoshop course here on YouTube, completely free, show you everything you need to know about landscape photography. Anyways, let's not waste any more time, guys. Let's jump right into Photoshop, and I'm gonna show you this secret technique to sharpen your photos, exactly how to use it to get great results. Now, within Photoshop here, I've got this image which if I zoom in, you can see it is sharp, but it could benefit from a little sharpness boost here, especially if I'm gonna crop, zoom in, print this, anything like that. Um, you can see, you know, it's sharp up here, but a little bit more sharpness never hurt anybody. So this is something I like to do oftentimes at the very end of my image edit. So there's a few different ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you what I think is the best way, kind of the method that I've been using for a while. Uh, what you're gonna do is duplicate this background layer. So click and drag this down to that plus button there. Now you have a new layer copy. Now, if you wanna call this sharpen, you totally can. Uh, just double click to rename. Then you are going to go up, we're gonna just click help and then type smart object. Now, if you want, you can go to layer smart objects, convert to smart object, but I am someone who loves to just go to the help bar and type exactly what I need and click on it there. Now, making it a smart object makes it so that this adjustment is non-destructive, meaning we can go back in and edit it after we apply it, we don't have to just reapply it to redo. Now what we're gonna do here is change the blend mode of this layer. We're gonna change the blend mode to overlay. Now I know what you're thinking, this doesn't look good quite yet and I totally understand. I'm gonna show you guys how to make this look good. You can also use soft light. Uh, soft light is gonna be a little uh, less sharpened whereas overlay is gonna be a little bit more high contrast of a sharpen. So we'll just keep it in overlay for the sake of this video. Now we're gonna to go to down to filter, we're gonna go down to other, and we're going to go to high pass. Now if you wanna zoom in while you apply this, you totally can. Uh, I'm holding the space bar, then the command, and then I'm clicking to the right to zoom in, or, or I'm clicking and dragging to the right to zoom in, or clicking and dragging to the left to zoom out. I'm gonna zoom in here up on these here trees, and then I can start to apply this high pass. So as I increase this, once you get up here, you know, you're not really sharpening. You're just kind of adding a bunch of contrast to the image. But you can see down here at zero um, shows nothing. And as I increase this number, you can see I'm kind of increasing the sharpness on the sticks. I'm looking right here. Now, make sure you're watching this video in 4K if you've got the internet connection for it. That's really going to help you. Now, toggling the preview isn't going to help you here because then you're going to be seeing the overlay version. Uh, but I will show you what you can do here. So we're going to set this usually between you know, two and 10, depending on the image. Um, and I always have a habit of checking that preview box, even though it does nothing. Uh, now, this is loaded out. We can toggle the eyeball here before and after, before and after. Look at how much sharpness we brought back to those trees. Now we can zoom around, we can look down here, you know, before and after, before and after. So we brought a lot of kind of micro clarity sharpness into the scene. So you can just reduce the opacity. I'm usually not a fan of that. What I like to do, and the whole reason why we make this into a smart object is because if you find that this is too strong when you toggle this eyeball, you can double click on high pass here and let's just decrease this. Let's go to about half, like 2.6. Click OK, toggle that again. Now maybe that's looking a little bit better. Maybe we want to adjust it again. Double click, and we can adjust this to exactly what we need. Somewhere in there might be looking a little more realistic for you. It totally depends on the image, how you are going to want to do it. But this works really well for landscapes to just apply a global sharpen uh, across the whole image. Of course, you could also go in here and apply a layer mask and mask this out, which is what we're gonna talk about in the second photo here, which is this moose. Now let's do the same thing again, click and drag down to that little plus, uh, and then we're going to convert to smart object, just like that. This is gonna load out as a smart object. We're gonna change the blend mode to, let's do overlay again, and then we're gonna to go to filter other, and we're gonna go down to high pass. 
Then we can zoom in again on our moose here. And we can, oops, and again, don't toggle that preview box. It is a habit of mine. I have a really big problem with toggling it and seeing the before and after. So don't hit that preview box because it isn't going to do a dang thing for you. Uh, rather just slide it all the way to zero and then increase. You can see as we get too far, like if we go up here like around 20, let's get that back to around 20. You can see we've kind of got this like ghosting going on around the moose. We definitely want to avoid that. And I think this is looking a little bit better. When we scroll over here, you can see just how sharp that fur is looking. I mean, it feels like you could almost just pet him on the screen. Um, so we're going to hit OK. Now, the one thing you're going to notice with this image, uh, you can see it is adding a little bit of kind of ghosting there, which we are going to tackle in just a second. But it's also doing the background. It's not doing the background any favors. It's making it more noisy. So what we're going to do here is actually make a selection of our moose and then use a subject selection. So we're going to click uh, this layer down here. Now you want to make sure you're using that cloud rendering for your subject selection. It's going to work so much better. I've got a video on it that that I will link here. If you need to do that, make sure that, that is on before you do this. Now select your bottom layer, select, go down to subject. Let this load out. This should make a really nice selection of just our moose here. Now we can apply that as a layer mask. Now the one problem that you are going to notice when I zoom in, now when I toggle this, you can see it only applies to the moose. But because of how the selection is, we might be missing just a hair on the edge of our moose. Like you can see maybe, let me find a better spot, maybe in here. You can see it's doing a lot of sharpening on the moose, but we want that edge of that moose to be sharpened. So if you are finding that to be a problem, this might be a good spot to look at. Yeah, if you're finding that to be the problem, what I'm going to have you do is click on your layer mask here, hit select and mask, and then we're gonna just make an adjustment to the layer mask. Super simple and easy, so hopefully this makes sense to you, but we're just gonna shift the edge. All we're gonna do is increase the edge, and that is going to make the mask a little bit bigger. Let's go about 50% here, hit okay, and then I'm going to option click on the mask so we can see the mask. This was the mask before, this is the mask after. So you can see, we'll look at it on the antlers as well, before and after. So we're just making that mask just a little bit larger. Now you can see we are sharpening the edge of that photo. Here I'm holding the space bar and just dragging over to look at our moose. You can see much better now, we're actually sharpening the edge. And then we're not uh, adding, increasing the noise in the background. You know, I'd probably hit a denoise on this afterwards. But when you have a subject like this in the photo, whether it's a person or an animal, it's really nice to be able to use that to mask that subject, to just make the subject stand out and not the background. Whereas, you know, in a landscape photo, it's gonna be okay to uh, sharpen the whole image because you want the whole image to be sharper. Don't be afraid to combine this with additional layer masks if you would like. Um, if you already have a layer mask on this layer here, you can create a new group here, drag this into the group, then create a new layer mask on the group if you wanted to mask this out of any particular spot. Like for example, if you didn't want it down here on his back or anything like that, you could mask that out just like that if you know how to use the masking tools. Now hopefully that's helpful for you. I think that this is a trick that a lot of people don't know about because under Photoshop, there's like six different tools under uh, sharpening filters. High pass is not one of them. The only way to use that high pass is to use it with overlay or soft light. Make sure to try both of them on your images because I do think both of them have their uses and both are great. Again, that overlay is going to be for more of that high contrast sharpen, whereas you've got your soft light, which is going to be more of a low contrast sharpen. So depending on the kind of image and what you want to do, you can try both. Now, if you guys have any questions about this method, if you have any methods of your own, let me know down below in the comments. I do love to hear from you guys. And then, of course, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me to continue to grow my page so I can keep giving you free videos every single week, helping you guys to become better photographers. Otherwise, guys, I think that's going to be all she wrote this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Austin Jackson. Appreciate you being here. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.